Hello, and welcome to another edition of our Active Motif webinar series. My name is Mason Brooks, and today we have a presentation from Active Motif technical support scientist, Dr. Michael Garbati. He'll be covering the popular technique of attack seek, what it is, and how it can be used to further your epigenetics research efforts. Thank you, Mason. Today we're going to start by discussing how chromatin is organized. We're going to discuss why we want to measure the open chromatin. We'll talk about the method, attack seek, and how it works. We'll look at how to read the data from attack seek. We'll compare attack seek to another very popular epigenetic technique, histone mark chip seek. And we'll discuss how attack seek can be applied to disease research and how it be, can be integrated into other next gen sequencing based techniques. So first, how is chromatin organized? The chromatin state, whether it's open or closed, is controlled by epigenetic modifications. These post-translational modifications to the histones or to the DNA itself change the shape of the chromatin, change the shape to open, active genes and enhancers, or closed, inactive genes and enhancers. So open regions, are active regions, and if a promoter is open, the gene it controls is being expressed. These open regions can be selectively sequenced to build a library of active loci. And to help explain how this works, I'll introduce the enzyme that makes it happen. So TN5 transposase is the enzyme we use in attack seek. It's been modified so that it cuts and ligates adapters to all genomic DNA that it can access. That is the open chromatin, building a library. So that's what ATAC-seq stands for. It's the assay for a transposase accessible chromatin. So the first step of ATAC-seq is that we add transposase to the genomic DNA and it gains access to all open and accessible regions of the genome. Transposase then inserts known DNA sequences, these are the adapters, into the open regions. Then these libraries that are created are amplified and sequenced. We can read that next-gen sequencing data as peaks on a trace of the genome. So let's take a look at an example of that. Here we can see peaks from an, an attack seek experiment. The peaks show loci that contain open chromatin. An example here is that treatment two induced some open chromatin at this particular locus. Treatment two also induced partial closing of chromatin at a different locus. Let's also compare attack seek to histone mark chip seek, another very popular epigenetic technique. Histone mark chip seek, because it depends on an antibody based enrichment, it requires a lot more cells than a tax seek. In the case of our chip kits, we suggest one to five million cells for, for chip, but we need only 50,000 to 100,000 cells for attack. And because CHIP is an immunoprecipitation, it requires an overnight incubation, adding time to the assay. And unlike CHIP, ATAC-seq does not require fixation, sonication, and all of the troubleshooting required for those applications. Therefore, with ATAC-seq, there's fewer cells needed, less troubleshooting, less time, and less cost. Also, ATAC-seq reveals all the active loci, promoters and enhancers, genome-wide. While ChIP-seq is gonna tell you exactly where a specific hist uh, a mark is on the genome, ATAC-seq will generally reveal all of the open chromatin. So then, how can ATAC-seq be applied to your disease research? 
we're going to look at some examples of how this can be applied. One of the seminal papers on ATAXI, Gwen Rostro et al., present a workflow that uses ATAXI to enable real-time personal epigenomics. Because it's such a rapid technique, one can go from a blood draw all the way through um, CD4 T cell purification to, through the ATAXI protocol and then through next-gen sequencing less than a day per patient. And that allows for daily monitoring during a treatment to determine which specific parts of an open promoter are closed. So this figure shows um, a promoter of IL-2. Uh, IL-2 is a key cytokine that drives T cell growth and functions in inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. In this particular case, we can see a daily look at the IL-2 promoter in one patient. So looking at the ATAC-seq data, ATAC-seq shows that while the NFAT binding part of the IL-2 locus is open, the IRF4 and STAT3 responsive elements are closed and inactive. So this suggests that the IL-2 overexpression that is seen in this patient is caused by the NFAT binding at the promoter. Therefore, a taxi has instructed that perhaps cyclosporin A, which is an NFAT inhibitor, might be a good candidate for this patient, which is displaying aberrant IL-2 expression. Furthermore, we can use ChIP-seq and integrate that data into a TAC-seq. So ChIP-seq for NFAT confirms the presence of NFAT at this promoter at the specific locus where a TAC-seq shows the, the chromatin is open. And so this shows an example of how ChIP-seq and a TAC-seq data can be integrated to complement each other. So let's see some more examples of a TAC-seq data integration. So in this study, blood from chronic lymphocytic leukemia patients and normal donors were subjected to both a TAC-seq and CHIP-seq for acetylated H3K27. That is the classic epigenetic mark of open and active chromatin. A TAC-seq, which is this lower track, reveals that even though histone acetylation is lost in the patient, there's still open chromatin at the bank one locus. At the CTLA-4 locus, however, there is apparently open and acetylated chromatin that correlate with each other in the patient sample versus the normal blood sample. So here's another example of a taxi data integration. Here, a taxi data is correlating with both RNA-seq and DNA methylation data. So these authors show that apparently open chromatin in CLL, um, that's this top trace, is also accompanied by a loss of DNA methylation, and that is this orange trace in the DNA methylation experiment. So the lower the orange bar goes, the less DNA methylation is at that locus. Also, at the same place, there is um, apparently expressed RNA as measured by RNA-seq. So by integrating data from all three of these assays, we can see a more complete picture of, of what is happening at each locus in the disease state. Okay, to summarize, uh, open chromatin is active chromatin, and a TAC-seq can map all of this on a genome-wide level. ATAXI data provides distinct peaks representing specific active loci, even specific responsive elements within a promoter. The ease of the assay allows for rapid detection of apparently active loci, and ATAXI can detect active transcription factor binding within promoters, informing a choice of drug candidates. A taxi can be integrated with RNA-seq, chip-seq, DNA methylation data, 
to complement your work. Thank you for your attention. For additional information, you can visit our website. Um, also, please contact me at tech underscore service at activemotif.com. Thank you.